Hello guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me another Monday virtually in our science classroom and today I'm literally inside our classroom. Today is my classroom cleanup day, so I'm going to be clearing out the classroom little by little. So um, let's go ahead and get started with our lesson for today. As promised, since last week, this week we're going to talk about the coronavirus. Uh, I think it's a very important scientific topic that we do need to discuss. Although it may look different from what the plants are being sent at home, those have been created by a district. I'm sort of taking my own lead on this one in order to create these videos. So let's go ahead and begin with some facts about the coronavirus. Uh, number one, the scientific name is COVID-19. I'm sure you've seen it a lot in the news. Um, it was first found in a city in China called Wuhan. Right now, the country with the most cases is the United States with 1,502,000. Okay, so one more time, sorry, I had a little interruption with my computer. So scientific name for coronavirus is COVID-19. It was first found in Wuhan, China. Uh, the country with the most cases is the United States with 1,502,476 cases. Uh, the country with the least is Lesotho. It is a country in Africa, the southern part of Africa. It only has one case. And why did this whole coronavirus happen? Well, there are a lot of theories out there. We are going to discuss the most relevant ones, the ones that actually have some scientific theory behind it, rather than the ones that are very <clears throat> false and that newscasters are just trying to present so that you watch your news. So we'll talk about all that this week. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with why is COVID-19 named COVID-19? I've heard some people say that the coronavirus isn't a big deal because this is actually the 19th coronavirus that we've had, that we already had coronavirus one, two, three, all the way to 19 and we were fine. So this is not a big deal and we're making a bigger deal than out of, we're making a bigger deal than what this should be. And that is incorrect. Uh, that's completely false. The reason why COVID-19 is called COVID-19 is because it was founded. It was found in the year 2019. That is the reason why they call it COVID-19. 19 doesn't mean that there have been 19 COVIDs already, 19 coronaviruses. No, it was the coronavirus that was found in the year 2019, right? So if someone tells you that, you know, you shouldn't worry about this because this has been the 19th one, they are incorrect. Now, how can it affect? Well, surfaces are most dangerous. A virus can last up to 72 hours or three days alive in a surface. Um, if someone, let's say, is going around running or walking and they sneeze, the virus of coronavirus can be suspended in the air for 30 minutes. And then it floats down to the ground where it's still alive for up to 72 hours. So the biggest danger is surfaces, I would say because we touch a lot of surfaces all the time. And when someone touches a surface that has a virus, and then they touch their eyes, their face, their mouth, maybe they don't wash their hands before eating and then they eat a pizza after touching all the counters in the pizza shop, then that's how people get infected. Now, some people may be immune to the virus, meaning that they can get it, but show no signs of being sick. And there's a test for that. We'll talk about that test later. Uh, but if you are immune to the virus, then that would mean that you can get the disease, but you wouldn't get all the complications that come along with it, which would be great. But there's no way to know uh, right now who is immune and who isn't. There's a test around, but we'll talk about that test later. Now, how does the coronavirus affect us? Well, the coronavirus affects the lungs. These are lungs right here inside of your chest and your um inside of your chest, your cavity, inside your ribs, and they breathe, expand, and exhale, uh, compress. Now, the virus accumulates in the lungs. Uh, the virus goes up and attacks your lungs, and that makes it hard to breathe. This makes some people develop serious respiratory illnesses like pneumonia that lead to death. So the coronavirus affects your lungs, you can't breathe, you have a fever, you have all these issues breathing, and that leads to a certain death. Now, who can it affect? The virus can affect anyone. People who have a history, uh, but people who have a history of health problems and elderly people are more at risk. So 
if someone has had problems with like their lungs and breathing, they are at a very big risk if they get the coronavirus. Also elderly people, because they don't have as many defenses as younger people. Children, crazily, are less likely to get the virus. Um, scientists believe that it's because children get a lot of colds while they're kids. And so their body is very strong against cold diseases. But uh, you can still get it even if you're children. Although less children and adults have gotten it, it's you still have to be very, very careful. Careful. You can't just run around touching everything and licking everything, thinking that you know you're a child and you are immune to the coronavirus. That's not how it works. All right. So everyone has to be careful. Um, and the reason why we have to be careful is we wouldn't want to spread it to people who uh, are older and could you know fatally be affected or people who already have a problem with respiratory illnesses. So that's the basic introduction of the coronavirus. Tomorrow we'll continue talking a little bit more. Today, this is what you need to complete. Number one, I need you to write down, I'm sorry, you need to answer these three questions. Number one, what is the scientific name for the coronavirus? Number two, how long can the virus live on the surface? How long can it stay suspended in the air? Number three, which groups of people are at more risk for the coronavirus or of the coronavirus? All right, so write down the answers to these three questions. Take a picture of that and then send it over to me as soon as you can. All right, thank you so much for your time and have a great day.